back a number of years ago, both Darren and I had the opportunity to go to Israel. And one of the things that people told us before we went over is they said, just make sure you bring a swimming suit. You've got to go into the Dead Sea. It's six in the morning, it's 85 degrees, and Darren and I decided we're gonna get up early, sun's up already, let's go for a quick swim in the Dead Sea. So we go out in the Dead Sea, and the first thing you realize with the Dead Sea, you start walking in there, and you're buoyant, your feet come up out of the water almost, it, it's just crazy because there's so much salt in there and you as a human being can be buoyant. That's why sometimes you'll see on the internet these pictures of people reading a newspaper just laying there and they don't have no the, flotation device. Right, They're just laying there in the Dead Sea reading the paper. Okay, so anyway, I, I'm telling you all this story about the Dead Sea. Here's where I'm going with this. We were floating around the Dead Sea for just a little bit and that's when it hit me that we had to fix the salty soils on our farm. And you say, well, why, why is that? Well, the thing with the Dead Sea is, when you start swimming around in there a little bit, you look straight down, you can see the bottom, it's clear as a bell. There are no fish, no plants, no algae, nothing. Everything's dead. The reason why is because of salt. Too much salt kills everything. If you start dumping tons of salt out there, you got a major problem, you got dead soils, that's not what we want to have. We want to talk today about how we can fix those once and for all. Well, just like the Dead Sea is the lowest point in the earth, the only way that water gets out of there is evaporation. It's the same thing out in your fields. Those little low spots in your field that don't drain very well, uh, whether it's because there's some erosion that's built up some soil where it shouldn't be, or just that that spot has always lied a little bit lower than other areas, the only way water gets out of those low spots is evaporation and it leaves all that salt out there in your fields and we end up with issues. A lot of times we'll see those spots of the field just turn white and eventually not even weeds will grow there. It's that bad. So it's important that we fix those areas of our field and there are a number of things that you can do. Well, here's the good news. Salts are leachable. In other words, they're going to flush out with water. Okay, so just think about it. All you have to do in those poorly drained spots is improve the drainage. Put some tile out there three feet down on the ground, maybe even two feet. Maybe you have to be really shallow, two, two and a half feet. I don't know, and have a bunch of lines. My point is, if you get some tile out there and the water can find that tile line, it's going to carry the salt right out of it. For example, we've been in Arizona and you would think, oh, in this super hot climate, they don't need drain tile there. Yeah, they do, because they have excess salt problems with their irrigation all the time. So what happens, they put the tile lines below ground and yeah, I mean, they don't have nearly as much water issue as we might up here in the northern part of the country, but they have a salt issue. So they can get those salts flushing down through in the tile line if they have some water moving through that soil. That's all it takes. You get tile out there, over time, you're gonna fix your salt problem. We've seen salt levels typically go down two tenths of a point per year in most soils. Well, it's important if you've got one of these areas out in your field and you say, man, that, that area is just so built up with salt, do some soil sampling out there and see what's going on. Uh, in some of those areas, you may have something else that could be a problem too, and you may wanna apply a soil amendment. Maybe you want to put some more calcium out in those areas, or maybe you need uh, calcium sulfate, something like this, where you could hook some of that salt on and, and displace the calcium in that equation and hook it onto the sulfate por portion of the calcium sulfate and flush that out. Uh, that's very possible. You may need something else to help flush things through. Now, here's the other thing, Brian. What happens when you get dry years? You don't get a lot of flushing. This well, may yeah, not and, happen overnight. Yeah, and we you need can to fix be, it. But anyway, our, our point is yeah, you may need to look at amendments to get whatever issue you have out there to be even more leachable than what you have. But yeah, it's not going to happen overnight. But almost immediately, you're going to be able to start raising some crop out there. What a lot of guys have done is just taken some bales, some straw, and mix that right in with that ground to help reduce that salt problem, basically. Well, just to get some organic matter yeah. out there and also to give something for soil bacteria to survive on. Uh, when you've got those high levels of salt, I would recommend planting a cover crop that can tolerate salt. Uh, something like barley, for example, that is pretty salt tolerant. Get something growing there so you can get the biological activity going again in that soil and get something to grow because it's not gonna change overnight. You're not gonna be able to flush all that salt out right away, but you can get stuff started over a couple of years and maybe over a three to five year period, depending on how bad that field is, you can get it back up to being fairly productive. We just want you to start taking steps today to fix the problem. And also I want you to understand 
usually when you have your salt levels going up, your soil pH levels are creeping up too. So now you've got two bad things happening because we know soil pH, high soil pH, anything above 7.3 is also hurting your yield. So you got a number of factors here that are all going to go because you didn't address that salt problem in the beginning. One other thing that I'd like to mention too is depending on which crop you put out there, you may see this problem a little bit earlier than others. For example, if you're putting soybeans out in the field, soybeans don't tolerate salt very well at all. No. Even the uh, very tolerant varieties, they aren't all that tolerant compared to especially some of the grass crops. And when you put soybeans out and you see that, man, I really have some issues with salt and high pH in some of these areas of my field, it's hurting your corn and wheat yields too, trust me. It's not, oh, it's only a problem in my beans, corn tolerates it just fine, no. Your corn is suffering in those areas too, it just doesn't physically show it as early as what the beans are going to. Well, once again, if you have salty soils that you're dealing with, fix the drainage, get some tile out there. That's the number one reason why you've got a problem is it's poor drainage. Salts are leachable, you can flush them out through the system. If you've got a ridiculously salty area, we encourage you to get some straw out there, maybe raise some cover crops, do anything you can to get anything growing. And over time, you're gonna turn that thing around when you get good drainage. One other thing you'll need to address on your farm is weed control, especially if it's this week's Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 